Hello and uh, welcome. Thank you for taking time out for joining this session today. Um, in this session, we would want to discover and talk about how to time your class to make sure that you end the class on time and you do not enter into a situation you do not want to be in. Um, in this session, I would share some timing and basic ideas of how to design your class in a way that you are uh, not lost. Plus, you can see if you want to do a short lesson or a long lesson. And of course, you can always uh, make adjustments. To introduce myself, my name is Omkar Jain, and I am the senior teacher at Aranta Yoga Ashram. Um, I'm teaching yoga teacher trainings for about 10 to 15 years by now. And um, a lot of you may know me here, and some of you are new. So thank you for coming here. So let's start. The very first thing I would say is for a very basic class, very short lessons that is often offered by yoga teachers. That is about 45 minutes lesson. Now, when you teach a lesson, you always need to have an idea. Why am I giving this lesson? Is this because I want to do a gentle class? Is this because I want to do a very strong class? So when you are uh, uh, in the lesson, you want to make sure that you have the clear ideas of what and how am I uh, doing it. Let's say if you're just taking a normal lesson, this is not very strong and this is not very, very light class. Then my suggestion would go is that you out of 45 minutes of a lesson, take about 10 minutes or 15 minutes for warming ups. This warming up could be, for example, sun salutations, leg raises, or some other kind of warming up exercises that you often teach in your classes. Now, 15 minutes warm up should be max in a 45 minute class, otherwise it becomes imbalanced. And when it's not balanced, then, then students can get tired when the warm-ups are a lot. So about 10, 15 minutes. Now it's a 45 minute lesson. I wouldn't suggest to do a lot of breath work. However, if you really like to do so, maybe about two minutes, three minutes of any easy or any uh, um, easy, gentle, easy to follow breath work. Abdominal breaths, full yogic breath, one round of kapal bhati, or some alternate nostril breathing, but just one. Once you're done with your warm up, that's about 10, 15 minutes, you would now want to do some postures with them. So overall outlearn, I would say about 20 minutes time to spend on poses. 20 minutes time. So 20 minutes means active postures. 20 minutes includes the transitions and also relaxations in between the postures. Meaning uh, in 20 minutes, a scheduled class should not have more than eight to 10 poses because then it is a bit too much for students. It becomes intense, it becomes heavier. Eight to 10 postures are also in a way when you intend to do it about one minute or less. If you want to do postures more than one minute, then you even may have to do less postures in the class. However, 45 minute class is still a bit short duration to do, but something is better than nothing. Eight to 10 postures with a complete goal of what you intend to teach. Is it a gentle class? Start with gentle postures. If it's a good class, start with strong postures and end on gentle postures. Don't start the class very easy postures and go hard. Generally in between, best is start a bit strongly, then go a bit less, a bit less, and then bring them into a relaxation. Once eight to 10 postures are covered, I would suggest Look at the clock. When you think 20 minutes are over, don't add anything else. 
And if you're running out of time and you think, hmm, I'm only at the seventh postures, I would still say, just leave it at as it. Don't add on more. Then spend about 10 minutes on a final relaxation to the maximum. I would say at least about five to seven minutes of minimum time to be spent onto a final relaxation and maximum 10 minutes. This total time is about 45 minutes. So the whole time or whole class breakup looks like this. 15 minutes for warming up, 20 minutes for asan practice, where you want to do about eight to 10 postures, 10 minutes on final relaxation. Now 20 minutes for postures again, I'm suggesting you to do 10. That means you are spending about two minutes per pose. That is either doing both ways, if the posture happens to be having right side and left side, or it could be getting in the posture, getting out of the posture and rest. Then comes about 60 minute lesson. That is nowadays quite popular, especially in gyms, where we want to teach something and want to make sure that we leave the room on time so other teachers can teach or people who have their own scheduled, they can, they can continue their days. So 60 minute class outline may look like 20 minutes for a warm up. Now in 60 minute lesson, you can offer breath work, but again, don't do a lot of breath work, maximum two. And if you choose to do it, I again would suggest to not do more than five to seven minutes of breath work. So 20 minutes with breath work, a warm up. Now here you want to spend about 30 minutes on poses. These 30 minutes to go easy, to take the time, I suggest to teach about 10 to 12 poses. 10 to 12 poses again, build up the way you want to see what is the theme of the lesson, check why you are teaching this and what is the what is the real reason. Again, theme could be a full Hatha sequence following the chakra wise or if you're teaching on muscle groups, then you can teach it accordingly. But 10 to 12 postures are sufficient because you would also need to give your students rest and they should not feel very tired. And if you are spending about 30 minutes on poses, then spend about 10 minutes, the last 10 minutes on final relaxation. Similarly, whenever you teach a lesson, my advice is that whenever you go, make sure you always see your watch and you know your time breakups. 20 minutes, I will let or complete my warm-ups. 30 minutes, I will end my asana practice. And 10 minutes, I will do my final relaxation. This is a 60 minute lesson, which is easy to teach. Then comes a 75 minute lesson. Now these are a bit unusual timings, but again, depending on the students, depending on the place you work or classes you teach, 75 minutes could also be a nice lesson to teach. This is a good one. 30 minutes you want to spend on breath work plus warm ups. I suggest here you can spend about 10 to 15 minutes on breath work very easily. Do at least two breath works for sure, give them a good break in between so they can understand the benefits they are receiving. And then spend about 30 minutes on poses. Now this is about minimum 30. This you can do a bit more. Posture time in 75 minute class can vary. It can be 30 minutes or it can be 40 minutes. Minimum in these 30 to 40 minutes, you want to teach about 12 to 15 poses. If 12 to 15 postures are taught, give about uh, 15 minutes of a relaxation. These all suggestions are mostly based on my experience, which is going on yin yoga or 
Hatha Yoga. So it, once you choose to do 15 poses, it is a nice way to rest, to use at least 15 minutes of relaxation. So students, when they get up, they get up fresh. Then comes 90 minute lesson. 90 minute lessons, one hour and 30 minutes. Quite popular in Hatha style. Quite popular to teach advanced classes or advanced students. Now this lesson, you would want to do 30 minutes of a warm up. So breath work and warm up. Say 10 to 15 minutes you can spend easy on breath work. And similarly, 15 to 20 minutes, you can spend on warming up. Sun salutations, push-ups, dolphins, leg raises, or other exercises. Now, it's a 40-minute lesson spent on asan. 40 minutes spent on asanas. Now here, to teach Comfortably 15 to 17 poses maxima. More than 17 poses, it could be a bit too much. It can be tiring. It can be also sometimes exhausting for students because as a teacher, you will have to rush up. As students, they would not get the appropriate rest in between the poses that they would expect. So, about 15, 17 poses. Then here you want to spend about 15 minutes minimum to the maximum of 20 minutes on final relaxation, including ending of the lesson. So 15 minutes for a relaxation, guided relaxation, and then take five minutes to come out of the relaxation, end the class, you can ask people if they have questions. You can tell them something basic if you see in their practice that can help them. And all of these can be adapted. You can always choose to do a bit less of relaxation, a bit more of asana. You can do a bit more of warm up, less of relaxation. However, I do suggest to not do a lot of warm up and do asanas. A lot of warm-up could be tiring, and then students uses less awareness for the postures, which may can cause injury or wouldn't bring them at the max point. So see if you can design a lesson in a way that is balanced for warm-up. Warm-up balancing, if you're teaching a balanced class, then you can teach warm-up according to what you want to do in the class. If it involves a lot of arm balancing, you can do exercises that gives them good strength, trains them. If you want to teach some basic postures, forward bends, back bends, you can teach them sun salutations. That is a good warm up. So your warm up should also reflect what sort of the class may look like. General rule if the class warm ups are heavy, postures should be taught easy. If warm-ups are easy, you can give them a strong class with long holds postures or teach them challenging postures. And if you see the students are in a weather condition, for example, it's a very warm day, try to avoid doing a lot of warm-ups because people sweat a lot and then get tired. If it's a cold day and your heatings are not so up, or the surroundings where you're teaching is not very warm, then you can use the warm-ups to heat them. So you need to know why am I doing it and can also help you to understand and design your classes even better. I can give you a small tip onto a class structure. That is, a, whenever you teach in Hatha class, in general, we try to do in a way that we start with breath work, we do some warm ups, and then we try to start the class if possible with the forward bends. This could be, for example, a shoulder stand to begin with. 
So a basic structure would go forward bend, back bend, twist postures, balance, and standing pauses. This way you can have an easy, nice flow to your lessons where it is uh, in a flow. In Hatha sequence, we mostly follow a chakra order where we start from the crown chakra and we go towards the root chakra. And that's how a classical Hatha yoga sequences are designed. And checking out which poses are linked with which chakras, we try to adapt and make a nice flow. Now, at the same time, when you're structuring a lesson with forward bends, back bends, twist, in general, people like forward bends because they're easy. And back bends are a little more challenging. So in short, some places it is also easy to say that forward bends are countered by the back bends you do. Similarly, a twist is a nice way to come to a neutral position before you start to prepare for a balance. And balance postures are the best places where you can challenge your students. Now this way, you can teach some sort of balance which helps them to increase their level from a crow to a crane, from a crane to some other fancy posture, handstands, headstands, forearm stands, peacock. This way, you can increase the level. If you want to teach an easy postures, you could teach a squat, you could teach crow, you could teach a tiptoe poses, and many more poses. And there are many books, good books, that gives you a lot of ideas of poses. Our teacher from Arhanta Ashram has also written a book on her Hatha poses for yoga practitioners, and you can check out the book. Now, these, it's been very strong belief among a lot of teachers that balance poses are easy to manipulate the level of the lesson. What type of balance you teach also tell people if it's an advanced or it's an easy class. Advanced class balance postures would probably involve handstands, scorpion, it could say uh, paradise pose and things like this. And an easy class pose would go an easy crow, a 30 seconds crow, could go for a tiptoe, could go for any other easy posture which is possible to teach and practice by all level students. Then when you're teaching a posture, you also need to know how do I decide if this is the right duration to hold this pose or not? There are in generally when we teach beginner to intermediate level class, there are three type of pose time often used by teachers. First one is about 10 seconds to a 15 second hold. 10 second, 15 second hold, these Poles are used for intense poses. Poses that are challenging, full locust, extended locust, bow, and poses like this. 10 seconds, 15 seconds, because they take a lot of effort and not everybody likes those heavy poses. Then we use a common time, one minute, about 60 seconds, one and a half minute. These are the poses that are easy to hold. Easy, for an example, a seated forward bend, easy posture, everyone can hold it. Tree position, mountain position. So these kind of poses are generally taught for 60 seconds or more. People can hold it. Now again, Depending on the group you teach, sometimes you are teaching a posture, you think it's easy, but when you teach to a group of people and you see people are struggling, you can always reduce the time of the pose. Or you can bring them out of the pose, explain them, give them some tip where they can 
try to do it in a nicer way and again try so sometimes it's not the holding time it's the it's the whole practicing time is considered then comes medium range poses now medium range poses are about 30 seconds to 45 seconds these poses are about something that is not very easy but also something that's not very difficult a very common example half spinal twist a bridge position fish position cobra position so poses with these kind of density are can be taught for 30 seconds 45 seconds and beginners can also respond to this pose timing quite well so using this timing of the poses using the number of poses and deciding how much do i spend you should never cross half of the time so what i mean here is if you want to spend 30 minutes on practicing asana you should try to not do more than 15 poses you want to mentally think i want to keep two minutes per pose at least because these two minutes are you instructing them these two minutes are you completing your instructions and saying time starts now these two minutes are also you giving them extra cues if that is needed and corrections plus you bring them out and you give them the rest after the pose so in short you're not even spending two minutes per pose if you see the full transitions if you see the entire thing so 30 minutes then 15 poses should be the max you should be able to teach now again you can always keep two poses extra in your sequence so in case you see that you have gone faster than you expected sometimes you couldn't give them rest or sometimes it was not needed to give the rest to the students then you can always keep one or two poses extra to teach and these doesn't have to be very fancy poses but these could be a poses that everyone can try out one could be a pose where you can explain them give them some good tips for example a tree position you can try challenge them to practice tree with the eyes closed and then you can you can bring them out if you see people are struggling give them good tips of how a posture can be done with the eyes closed and maintain good balance and then make them try but at the same time also teach them something that they can enjoy doing some nice stretch a cat and cow a happy baby or some sort of nice position deciding all of these overall ideas you always are ready to know two poses extra on my hand and two poses less if I end. But the order of the pose, the logic of the pose should be there. Whenever we teach a class and we see, okay, today I had to explain something way more than I thought I would. And now I'm not able to even complete 15 poses in 30 minutes. Then I would try to see if I can merge some postures. I can skip some poses from my sequence because there's always similarities in the postures. If you're teaching a Hatha class, you would probably always offer a bridge position, half bridge, or you will always offer a bow position. Half bridge and bow pose are actually same family pose, but half bridge is mostly duration for 30 seconds and a bow pose is taught for 10 seconds. You can always change the postures. You can always skip one and have the benefit from other one. You teach a plow position, halasan, and you're teaching a seated forward bend, paschim othanasan. They both are same family postures. The only difference is the gravity. One posture is done on the throat, another posture is done on the sit bones, but eventually it comes from the same family, which shares similar benefits. Again, you would be able to see something that is a fish position and a cobra position. And there are many, many, many more 
similarities during the poses where you're doing a chest opener or a forward bend, back bend or a forward bend. So you can always adapt, you can always adjust and always have a grip. If I'm teaching 40 minutes of asana practice, I would always know every 15 minutes where am I? Am I going to make it through or am I not going to make it through? Always keep extra time. Extra time is never harmful than no time. So that's why if you see the time breakups I gave you, I always give you less postures of the half time. 20 minutes for a 45 minute lesson, but eight to 10 maximum poses. 60 minutes, full lesson, 30 minutes to spend, 10 to 15, 10 to 12 poses. 75 minutes class, again, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, whatever you choose, depending on the warm up. 15 poses to the max, 10 poses about. 90 minute lesson, 40 minutes poses and about 15 to 17 max postures to teach. And whenever you have max postures, you can always choose to skip one or two poses in the end. Not necessarily always have to have it. But your final relaxation time should be set. You always have to know, okay, I am now going to end my class at final relaxation this time. No matter what you have done, no matter what you have taught, you should always end on that time. Or skip the in-between postures and reach to the end. Whatever is your ending sequence, whatever is your ending posture is. For example, a lot of people, they end the class on a mountain. So if you are doing a twist and you are now running out of time, I would just do one or two poses for about 10 to 30 seconds max duration and end the class. Remember, it's not about how many poses you do, it's about what you do. And that's what we want to keep in mind. You always expect your students to come back. So try not to teach them everything in one class. Hold back your information so you know, today I delivered this, next time I delivered that. So they also have something new to look forward. And they have something short to try it out. These are my small tips for all of you. If you have any questions, I could be happily answering them now. We have about 10, 15 minutes where we can use to answer your questions. If someone has something to ask or I will be happy to answer. Maybe you can raise a hand or write it in the chat box so we can see to answer some questions. I have a question from Claire. What do you do when a planned class and many students suffer from knee or hip or shoulder injuries? Uh, it depends on the injury. Sometimes offering a variation of a posture helps. Like you are teaching something and uh, you, you are teaching, for example, let's say an example, you're teaching a cow face position and you, you get to know your student is having shoulder pain, cannot do it. Now, if more than 50% of your students cannot do it, I would change the pose. But if less than that, then I would happy to help them and offer an adjustment or something less strong to work on. Keeping in mind that any offer of position that I'm going to uh, teach them or show them, I would make sure that it will not be painful. I will always try to keep that in my mind. Similarly goes for any other knee. I will see if I can use a cushion, blog or prop to help them from injuries. I can make it a bit more comfortable before I can ask them to go more further. If the problem or student finds it difficult when they are getting in it, then I would say um, ask them to do 50% of the body capacity, not full on and see where and how um, it works. Sometimes offering 50% option is easier or sometimes offering a replacement is easy or sometimes offering blocks, props or a wall variation if you happen to have is easy. Um, 
and if possible i would try to ask my students in a in a arrival form or in a sign up form about their injuries so i know in generally what type of students am i expecting and then before i go i will see if i can actually make a class which will help them heal the problems they're carrying or at least use some benefits out of it i hope this helps then i have question from ani i teach at gyms where they like to do more poses and happy with less relaxation um yes of course there are students who actually do say like to have more poses because they want to be more active that is fine uh, remember the goal you don't want to um over push them you don't want to bring them to a limit but however you can challenge them so if you're teaching about 10 poses and they want to do more definitely you can teach them more but also do try to give a bit of rest so they understand between a yoga class and a uh, fitness workout you know it's not a boot camp but again teaching is about students and offer what your students want if they want more happy poses more strong poses give it if they want relaxation can give it i think i hope i helps you in there then i have tina asking me are there any poses that are mandatory in every class i wouldn't say mandatory but i would say you should keep some basic poses in your class so if you are teaching for example in hatha class um it is recommended that you have some base where we um we keep a same sequence throughout and sometimes we we changes the postures where students can actually get an idea okay for example let's say in common um, hatha pose classes you would see there are always a sitting forward bend there is always a fish there is always a cobra there is always a twist now you can always keep these as your basic postures but you can always sometimes in a blue moon change these postures with something different a seated forward bend could be replaced with one legged forward bend a seated forward bend can be replaced with some other forward bend that helps them to feel ha huh, okay motivated that's new so sometimes we offer them some new spicy poses but um in my classes when i teach i always keep a headstand in my class i always teach headstand i always teach a forward bend i always teach a back bend i always try to teach a classical cobra a twist and a mountain these are postures that i personally always teach in my lessons because i think they are quite easy and challenging at the same time but depending on the regularity of my students i sometimes do variate these postures like i do change a mountain with a chair so this way i can keep my students more engaged in the lessons and if i see them getting bored out of regular postures they can come and try out different so they know okay there are more to yoga not only these limited poses um then i have emma asking a question she says in my class there are many people with injuries and less mobility i struggle to find alternatives for the balanced postures for some malasan or tipto is already not an option <laughs> um now with this one it depends what kind of balance you want to do if even a malasan is challenging you can always try to replace it with a standing balance posture something like a tree something like a dancer posture um something you can always do is a tabletop pose or a hang to toe pose and especially when the balance these are easier for other just ask them to close the eyes and you will see people will start to find it very challenging 
So it, it really depends. It not necessarily balance has to be done on the floor. Balance can be done on the feet, on the hands, or both. And I'm sure uh, there are many ways you could you could try out. And I hope uh, this helps you. Otherwise, you can write me an email after, and we can see what sort of uh, poses we can suggest you. Then I have Charu asking me a question. Says sometimes students give the example that other teacher does like that. This awesome not like you. How should I give the answer in a positive way? You can say in a very nice way that uh, we all look different. We all teach different. I think um, I would say something like this. I would say, yeah, I, I understand. Uh, but I would also tell them that many teachers are taught with many te teachers and they may have learned with different uh, knowledge. We respect all the knowledge. I suggest you that you try our way also. Give it a go with an open heart and see how it is for you. Maybe eventually it is something for you. Maybe it is not. If it is not, you can ask them how differently they do. And then you can see if um, if it really is too different. And then you can say, okay, if that is the way you prefer to do a posture, of course you can do it. And uh, there is always open. Be open to see how they are taught and be open to see how they react to it. I would just be very easy and say, yeah, we are different and let's see, try out both ways and choose which one is the best for you. Um, then let's see, I have Ani saying thank you. Ani, very welcome. I have Bas. If you have to help 12 people in Shish Asan for 10 seconds, it takes a lot of time. How would you manage that? A very common question, Bas. Uh, Shish Asan is a very good pose. Like I said, I always teach it because I always like it. And it gives a very good feeling to students to actually show our skills that we actually know what we do. Um, depending, if it's a regular student, I would say, offer them some easy variation of headstand that is one leg headstand that is half headstand the knees are to your chest and then you can see how many are willing to try independently and how many are still expecting you to come out of 12 i would divide them into two rows and i will say okay today row one you can try one leg headstand or try to go independent by doing a half headstand and row two, I'm going to come and help you. Or sometimes if I end up spending too much time on a one posture, I will compensate with other ones. Meaning either I would do less rest or I would combine poses into one and move ahead. And that's how I will suggest you to manage it. Then I have Inga. Inga asks, some teachers ask to go rest on the mat in between the poses. Yes, of course. Um, I I do, it, it depends what kind of poses we are teaching. Definitely in Hatha, we often offer relaxations. Depending what kind of pose we teach, we do offer relaxation, but um, not a lot of rest also. Unless the theme of the class is to be a very easy flow, a very relaxing class. Um, I think, I, I'm not sure if I'm answering you right, but moderate rest in the class is good. And when we teach a class, we try to keep a resting time from minimum 30 seconds to a maximum 45 seconds, not longer than that. So, uh, if I'm answering the right question, you can say otherwise, please try and ask me again. Um, then I have some nice messages from people. Luke says, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, now I have some nice messages. So these are very nice to see. I think they are from people who know me already. So it's very nice to see good messages from all of you. Thank you for your kind words. Um, if there are any more questions, you can always, of course, contact us or reach me out 
those who know me personally are my students. You have my contact personal details. Um, if you do not know me, you can and you still have some questions which I'm not able to answer here or I'm not able to find you on the screen. You can always write us an email that is on info at arhantayuga.org. You can sign my name for it. So the team knows that the question is for Omkar. And uh, there are many more tips. I will try to come out with some more new tips and see if I can deliver and share with you. I want to wish everybody a very nice day. And I want to thank everybody for taking out your time and joining this from all over the places you are. This has been a good time. And I hope I was a little helpful. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. My name is Omkar. And uh, maybe I hope to share some yoga practice, some of you with some days. Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best for your teachings. Have a lovely day and a lovely weekend. And maybe until the next time. Thank you very much.